So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at some strategies that you need to have in order to be successful. So in order to do a physics problem, nine times out of 10, in fact, your first few chapters, you're going to have to deal with vectors. So let's talk about vectors. Right now, I'm drawing something called a coordinate system. It has a lot of names. Some people call it an XY coordinate system xy coordinate plane or a Cartesian coordinate system or another one is an orthogonal coordinate system orthogonal meaning at right angles to so let's just draw a vector and we'll call it vector a and that makes an angle theta with the x-axis well you're gonna have to resolve a lot of vectors into their x and y components now this is where the math and the trigonometry come together. In order to resolve this vector into its x and y components, do you understand what components are? If you look at this, this uh, vector, it goes over and it goes up. Well, the part that goes over, that's considered the x, sorry, that's called the x component. And the part that goes up, that's called the y component. So this would be a sub x, and this would be a sub y. Now, in a given problem, you might have to know, well, what is the size or the magnitude of that x component? Well, guess what? That has nothing to do with physics. That's trigonometry. So let's get the tools that you need in order to solve a physics problem. I'm sure you know sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, where do they come from? Sine theta is equal to the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Well, what does that mean? OK, let's leave our vector up here on the board. And then, right next to it, let's do a triangle. Here is the angle theta. This side is considered to be your adjacent side, because adjacent means next to. Well, adj the adjacent side is next to the angle theta. This is known as your opposite side, because it's on the side opposite of theta. This is your hypotenuse. Isn't that starting to look a little bit about our, like our vector over there? The hypotenuse is the magnitude of the vector A. The side adjacent happens to be the x component of the vector. And the side opposite is the y component. Do you see where these two line up? Well, if you want to know, if you know the hypotenuse of the triangle, and you want to know how big the opposite side is, well then just come on over to our sine function. Let's make a relationship between our trigonometry triangle and our physics problem with the vector. The opposite side, that's equivalent to a sub y. The adjacent side is equivalent to a sub x. And the hypotenuse, that's equivalent to the vector a. So if we want to know the size of the, a, the y component of our vector, then let's just go over to our trig function. Since we know that the opposite side is equal to a sub y, and the hypotenuse is equal to the magnitude of vector a, we can go down here and say sine theta is equal to a sub y over the magnitude of the vector. So use your algebra. If you want to get a sub y by itself, then we just multiply both sides by the vector a. 
since whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, you have to do on the other. Cancel out your A's. Then vector A times sine theta is equal to A sub Y. So now you know the size of the A component of your vector. And if I want to get the side adjacent, or A sub X, I just take the cosine function. Cosine theta is equal to A sub X over vector A. Multiply both sides times vector A. The A's cancel. Vector A times cosine theta is equal to A sub X. It's really just that simple. So, whenever you get a vector and you need to know its x and y components, all you have to do is go over to your trig functions. And if you don't remember them, just write them out and then use your algebra. If you do it enough, you're going to start to remember it and you won't have to write it out anymore. You can do it from memory.